there, Cousin here. Welcome back to Always Doing. Today I have my most anticipated reads for November 2018. There's a little bit of everything here. We have books in translation, we have some fantasy, we have nonfiction, which is perfect for nonfiction November, we have a classic, like I said, a lot of stuff, so let's get right into it. The first book I have for you is Picture Perfect Cowboy by Tiffany Rice, book number 10 of the original Sinner series, but it stands alone, no worries. You may recognize the cover because I reviewed this in my August wrap-up, so if you want more details, do go over there. As a quick summary though, it's an erotic contemporary romance. Simone is a photographer, she's doing a charity calendar, and she ends up taking the pictures of a very hot a uh, bull riding champion, and they hit it off. And it's a Tiffany Rice novel, and it's in the original Sinner series, so you know you're going to have some dominance and submission, as well as amazing characters. It is a little bit shorter length, but I did like it a lot. Again, see my full review for more info. And that one is out on November 5th. Next is a book coming out November 6th. It's The Lonesome Bodybuilder by Motoya Yukiko, and it's translated by Asa Yoneda. This is, again, an advanced copy I got from Soft Skull Press, and I'm absolutely loving it. There are 10 short stories and one novella. The novella is right around the 100-page mark, I think. Some of the stories are delightful, some are disturbing. They examine the role of women in Japanese society. I saw one reviewer who said that it attacks, quote, outdated social expectations, unquote. But this is what Japanese society is like. Women aren't as equal or free as they are in the West. There's still an expectation to stay home and be a mother and housewife and, pr and provide in that fashion and to support your husband who is doing the nine to five, but it's Japan, so it's more like a nine to nine. The one piece I can quickly tell you about that illustrates all of this is the novella length tale. It's about a husband and wife who start looking like each other. Not just in the way that, you know, they may start dressing alike or picking up each other's mannerisms, but their faces are actually starting to rearrange themselves to look more like the other person. And when they look in a mirror, they can see that their features have gone slightly skewed, but then snap back, like you caught them at it when you look in the mirror. And just, it's so, it's weird in an amazing way and it stays mostly rooted in reality. It starts off with things where you can be like, oh yeah, life is weird. I can believe that. I've heard things like that before. And it just slowly, like I said, just goes down this incredibly interesting and disturbing and weird path. Not all of them are disturbing. That's the phrase I'm using right now, but these have been pick-me-ups I try and read each one in one gulp and then let it sit for a while. Like I said, I appreciate the feminism behind it. I'm in a weird situation because I could have read this in the original, but I'm reading it in the translation, and I do like the translation. There aren't any spots where I was finding myself back translating into Japanese or that rang wrong. It just, it flows really well. So I'm looking forward to you guys being able to buy The Lonesome Bodybuilder. Next I have two November 13th releases. The first book I have is Vida Nostra. It's written by Marina and Sergei Jachenko and it's translated from the Russian by Julia Meta Hersey. This one caught my eye because the publisher likened it to Bear in the Nightingale and Lexicon and The Magicians and that it's a dark fantasy. So we have a teenage girl and there is a mysterious and somewhat sinister man who comes and asks her to do tasks. And for each one she completes, with some risk to herself, she gets a gold coin. These coins gain her entry into the Institute of Special Technologies. The classes are odd, she can't understand them, and instead of punishing the students for their wrongs, they end up using terror and coercion instead. However, as she continues to be there, she finds herself changing in ways that don't mesh with reality and she ends up wanting that more than anything. I'm intrigued by the darkness of this. I love that it's a Russian fantasy in translation. I love all kinds of genre fiction in translation. There needs to be more of it. I want to support that. And look at this cover. 
This is amazing. The other November 13th title I have for you is nonfiction. It's called Burning the Sky, Operation Argus and the Untold Story of the Cold War Nuclear Tests in Outer Space by Mark Wolverton. Now, I live in Japan. The crazy dude with all the nuclear weapons, he's, he's just over a little top skip C from where I am. So ever since the nuclear tests started picking up not long after I got here, and especially the ones that flew over Japan, which was freaky, I have taken a much greater interest in nuclear technology and disarmament and all of that kind of stuff. I liked and can recommend Command and Control, and this one sounds like it's an the continuation of that. So it's the Cold War. The US knows that the Soviet Union has ICBMs because that's what put Sputnik up into orbit and they're freaking out and how do we stop a potential attack from the Soviets? And one engineer scientist goes, hey, what if we, you know, detonate nuclear weapons in outer space? It would create a belt of radiation that would fry, that's the only word they use in the description is fry, but that would fry any incoming ICBMs. And they actually did this in an atmospheric test. A lot of documents relating to this operation have been declassified recently. So Wolverton, who has written in the past about nuclear stuff and also about space stuff, uh, came up with this report. I can't say it'll be the best read for everyone, but for someone like me who has an interest in it, I think it'll be very interesting. And my last recommended new release for the month is actually a very, very old book, and it's Aladdin. This is in a new translation by Yasmin Seal from the French. Now, this is something I didn't know, but you know you have A Thousand and One Nights, which was written in Arabic, and has all of these stories that we hear through all kinds of stuff. Aladdin is in A Thousand and One Nights, but it wasn't in the original collection. It was added in the 18th century in a French translation of all things. Apparently the French translator heard it from a Syrian storyteller and they put it in, but that was the first appearance of the tale of Aladdin. I'm sure most of us know it because of Disney films and that's certainly my experience, but apparently, like many fairy tales, the original is a bit darker than, you know, the movie would lead us to believe. I'm especially interested in this because it's going to be printed with a bunch of illustrations, and Yasmin Seal, the translator, translates from both French and Arabic, which puts her in a unique position to be translating the entire 1001 Nights which it looks like she's working on right now. This is the first part that's being released. I'm excited to see what the translation is like, and I need to get more literature from this part of the world in my head. I haven't read enough books translated from, well, Arabic, but you know, Middle Eastern languages, period. So this is really good. There we have it, my November 2018 most anticipated reads. Did any of them catch your eye? Let's gab about them down in the comments. Subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!